through it. I don't have a screwdriver or anything with me. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix this on the side of the road, but I do have a laptop. Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter 2, and today we're gonna be making a video with the all-wheel drive Civic, talking about some of the issues that I'm having with it so far. I uh, haven't even really been able to feel any real power out of this thing yet because of these issues that I'm going to show you guys and talk about. Uh, but I did wanna start off today's video with a little bit of uh, maybe motivation or encouragement for you guys, because sometimes it's I struggle with even getting out to the shop and making videos for you guys because I always worry about like, you know, what, uh, I, I'm not doing a good enough job or I'm not um, you know making good content as some people say and to be honest we don't I don't need to and you guys don't need to listen to that voice in your head saying that you're not doing good enough I'd like to share a little Bible verse with you guys um, it's Galatians 5 so Christ has truly set us free now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up in slavery to the law so don't get tied up in that in that negative voice in your head just get out there and do it because Jesus paid it all for me and all of you. I may not be perfect, but he is. Uh, thanks for all the views and the likes and the subscribes. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We do a lot of Honda tuning and uh, just, you know, talking about horsepower and stuff like that with a side of life. Feel free, join the, join the community here and uh, leave a comment down there and let me know what you guys think of uh, the video. So anyways, um, I took the car out and it started having uh, it drives really well, actually. I uh, drove it around for probably a half hour today, and there's a few issues that came up. So the first thing is, is it never would warm up. Like, I think the hottest temperature it got to was 151 degrees or something like that. So I wouldn't doubt if there's like no thermostat in this thing. Uh, and both of the cooling fans are on all the time. As soon as you turn the key forward, both the cooling fans are on. And like I said, it just seems like there's no thermostat in it or maybe it's just because the fans are on all the time and it's such an efficient uh, setup with this shroud and everything like that that makes it not warm up so I'll probably end up doing the fan wiring or honestly just disconnecting the fans for now wherever they're wired to because um, I would rather have this thing running at optimal temperature 180 degrees or something like that or at least above 160 uh, typically I don't do a dyno pull on a car until it's over 150 um, and I like to see around 160 to 170 for when I'm doing a pull. Um, so I got to figure out the fan situation and getting it to warm up. Uh, I did do an oil change. I put like almost seven quarts in this thing and this uh, unit two oil pan, I don't know how big it is, but it's like, it shows like almost a quart low on this uh, dipstick with seven quarts in it. Uh, so that was kind of crazy. And then the main issue that I'm running into is it's over boosting. So I went out on my test drive today and I cracked into it a little bit in third gear and it like hit the boost cut and it was like running really rich maybe. Um, I was watching the wideband, I was doing a pull and it just like shot up to like 24 pounds of boost right away. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird because the tune says that only in fourth and fifth gear, the boost is higher than the wastegate. So um, on the K-Pro, on the boost table, I'll show you here quick. That stupid alarm. <laughs> While my laptop boots up here, I'll talk to you guys a little bit about it. Uh, so on the Honda, there's the boost control table and it was, it was gear-based uh, duty cycle or gear-based gear target boost and it is only activated in fourth and fifth. Anything going up to that should have been fine. So if we go under the parameters here, under boost control, this was on, and it was set up as gear-based duty cycle, it looks like. And then you can see down here on this table, fourth, fifth, and sixth gear had 20 pounds of boost in it, not first, second, and third. And when I did a pull in third, for it to hit 20 pounds of boost or something like that, it hit like high enough boost where it hit the cut because I was looking at the boost cut on here and the boost cut is at 25 pounds and it was hitting the cut and on the gauge inside the car, I saw 24.8 or something like that, which makes sense to tell me it's just running too much boost. So my first uh, tackle, my uh, try to fix this was I unchecked enable boost control and I uploaded that. So now the boost controller was completely off on the tune and I uploaded it, still the same issue. So then I proceeded to come out under the hood 
and I just ran the wastegate line from the reference off of the turbo here. So this comes off the compressor housing to give a boost reference to the wastegate. And this normally goes to a T, which then goes into uh, the bottom of the wastegate and into the boost controller here. And then out the other side, this line goes to the top of the wastegate to feed that excess pressure into the top if we want to control um, dome pressure on the wastegate. So like I said, I eliminated that. I hooked the top hose and I unplugged the top hose so that can vent to atmosphere. And then I ran, I ran the lower wastegate line right to the reference without a boost controller at all. So the solenoid being clogged up or something weird like that eliminated that completely from this variable. Uh, to my surprise, the car still ran into the boost cut at like 25 pounds of boost. Um, so now I'm going to proceed to pull the wastegate off and see if there's like five springs in this freaking wastegate or like three of them at least. There's probably two or three wastegate springs in it. Uh, that would be my assumption of why it's not opening or maybe one of the plugs fell out. Um, on the bottom on these tile gates and on the hunter tuned wastegates, there's a couple spots where you can put your reference line to on the bottom of the wastegate and sometimes those plugs can actually rattle loose if you don't tighten them good enough. So I'm gonna double check and make sure that all the block off bolts are in the bottom side of the wastegate and I'm also going to see what springs are in it because I would like to run this thing on like five pounds on the wastegate, uh, something really modest and then hook the boost controller up to turn it up from there. Cause we can always turn it up, but you can't turn it down if the wastegate is got like two or three springs in it. So we're gonna figure that out. I'm gonna pull the wastegate off right now and then I'll tell you what I see. All right guys, so I got the wastegate off of the car and uh, man, this thing's a big honking wastegate. It's like, I think he said it was a 60 millimeter uh, tile gate. Um, there's no branding on the wastegate. It's just blank, uh, but I did take it apart and the spring inside of it, it's only a single spring, but this spring is pretty stiff um, to the point where I had to use the vise to actually get the cap off of the wastegate. And when I pulled the cap off of the wastegate, the valve fell out. Um, so the valve goes through the bottom through that center hole there, out the top, and then connects to the diaphragm with three little set screws in here. And there was only one set screw in there and it was loose. So I'm gonna have to get some set screws. I'm gonna go to the hardware store tomorrow and I'm gonna get two more set screws for it. Uh, so this valve is tightened in there properly because the val or the diaphragm the diaphragm could have been opening but the valve was still stuck down because it wasn't actually connected to the diaphragm uh, so that's my theory currently the wastegate was still kind of shut and wasn't actually opening because the valve was not connected to the diaphragm properly there's no rips or anything in the diaphragm itself so I think once we get some set screws in here and I'm gonna try to find a smaller spring just to kind of kill two birds with one stone maybe that that single spring might be 20 pounds um, and I don't want that so maybe I'll try to find another spring laying around somewhere um, so we can put a uh, softer spring in it and two more set screws put it all back together with the valve actually functioning and then I'll test it with the compressed air uh, to make sure that the valve is opening with air um, and then we'll put it back together and give it a shot but I'll have to wait till tomorrow to uh, go to the hardware store to get those set screws so for tonight that's gonna be it uh, but we'll see you in the morning or in like two seconds for you guys all right guys it's the next day I'm out at the shop again and I uh, got uh, went to Ace Hardware kits and file actually if you guys ever heard of that in Wisconsin um, and I got some set screws uh, they have odds and ends hardware uh, that you know you can't get at like the big box stores uh, so they had the set screws they're like m4 metric set screws and I got the valve reinstalled back into the wastegate and all the set screws are nice and tight uh, so now I'm going to be swapping the wastegate spring uh, this is a spring that I had laying around it's about half the height as the one that came out of it um, but it is the same diameter and this thing I literally cannot compress it 
holy crap. Okay, I almost can compress this one all the way. This one, I can compress all the way. Um, so hopefully this gives us like way less boost than this spring if the spring was causing the issue. So like I said, I'm gonna try to kill two birds with one stone here. I'm fixing the valve and I'm putting a smaller wastegate spring in it. So uh, it might have the complete opposite issue now where it only makes like three pounds of boost. Three pounds of boost is a lot more manageable and it's easier to turn it up than running 25 pounds of boost uncontrollably and can't get it to come down. So we'll start off with this small wastegate spring and we can always turn it up from there and it's much more tunable through the boost controller that way um, than trying to go swinging for the fence with the wastegate spring. So I'm gonna get this pack thrown together and then we'll pick up with you guys in a second. All right, I just got the wastegate back on the car and I hooked up the boost controller the way it was hooked up when I got it. Um, so now I have my laptop in the car. We're gonna go for a little drive. I also unplugged the cooling fans um, just to see if we can get a little bit more temperature in the motor uh, comparatively to my first test drive. So I'm gonna go start cruising around and see how it goes. Twin disc life. Ooh. guys so I'm gonna show you guys what the car is doing um, I got the data logger running I'm gonna slow down here and just give it a second gear pull it's on four pounds or five pounds but when I hit VTEC it starts to run lean I don't know if you guys saw that but it's uh, super lean so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try one more time to uh, just give it all the fuel. Um, it looked like it was actually lean before VTEC there too. So we'll give it, uh, let's try before VTEC, we'll give it 30. Ah, stupid freaking computer. So this is just the boost portion of the map on the low cam side. We're gonna give it 20 on this side and then over here in the VTEC side we'll give it 50 fuck it just an insane amount we'll see if it still runs lean I kind of want to see if there's any sort of fuel compensation going on when it gets hot nope it's all zeros zero zero all right, so we just uploaded that file. Let's uh, check the graph here, actually, and just see the uh, last pull that we just did. I want to make sure the duty cycle is, like, not falling off, which it still is when it hits VTEC. Okay, I just splashed a crap ton of fuel in this thing. Either, either the tune was that far off, Maybe it's got that, maybe it's got E85, I don't think so. I only put two or three gallons of ethanol in it and it's probably a way bigger tank than that. I don't know, let's just try it again. Like I said, I don't know if it was just, uh, maybe the tune isn't set up for that amount of boost. I put in, I don't know. Try to keep the load low on this thing, just do second gear. See? Still 15 something. Man, this twin disc is harsh. Um, yeah, so before VTEC there, looked pretty good. But I just added 50% of fuel. And the map is starting to look like way too, um, it's starting to look way too like heavy on fuel. Like it shouldn't be needing this much. It should just be doing it. It should just be fueling with what I have in the map. 
with what I have in the map, it should be Pig Ridge. I was also playing around with the uh, wide open throttle compensation, which I don't think that has anything to do with it, but, because I turned it off, because I'm like, I'm just gonna splash all the fuel in the map. Uh, and make sure like the O2 is not trying to compensate in some weird way. What the heck, dude? The duty cycle's still dropping, like. You can see this. This is the one we just did where I added 50% more fuel to VTEC. And the duty cycle's still dropping, and it's actually not going up. That's kind of... Oh! I'm a moron. Yep, this guy, definitely an idiot. Yep, rookie mistake. I've been so used to tuning on S300, guys. Oh, what an idiot I am. I've literally been adjusting the zero degree table this whole time. When the cam angle that the car is actually running is like 25 degrees. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, well, let's actually put some fuel in this thing and do a pull, because um, I don't think it's fuel pressure. Uh, it's funny, I think... Uh, I think God actually saved me right here because I was uh, actually at the shop with the car and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm gonna, just gonna pull the fuel filter off and I'm gonna see what, um, you know, it's probably clogged up with something, the fuel pressure's dropping because I'm adding fuel in the map and it's not actually doing anything. And then I feel like God told me, he's like, hey, um, go film a video and actually show what the car's doing uh, because then I feel like uh, the video will be better and in turn I actually figured out the issue by just coming on here and making video about what it's actually doing. So, with that, with that being said, one thing you can see here is the duty cycle, this green line, when it hits VTEC, the duty cycle drops. So I went into the tune a little bit, and what I noticed is like the five pound, you know, kind of like down here area, was actually less fuel than the low cam side. So that was like a big red flag to me. I was like, well, maybe they just never tuned it on this low a boost and they only tuned like up here, you know, 10 pounds and above. Maybe they only tuned it 10 pounds and above on the VTEC side and they never bothered with any of this stuff down here. So what I did is I took the low cam side, which I knew was good. It was like 10.5 air fuel before VTEC. So I just took the whole low cam side and I pasted it onto the high cam and then I added even more fuel into the high cam. So I was like, okay, I'll do another pull. Um, because like I said, the duty cycle was actually dropping. And when I would come into VTEC, the car would start running lean. So it was like 10.5 and then it'd cross into VTEC and it'd go like 15, um, kind of dangerously lean. So after copy and pasting those values back into the high cam side from the low cam and adding like 30%, to the high cam on top of what it already was rich on the low cam, it still was running like 15 five air fuel. Uh, so I don't know what's going on, but every time I cross into VTEC, it is just running away lean, which tells me one thing, it's dropping fuel pressure. Um, maybe this was not an issue while the guy had it and when it was on 25 pounds of boost, maybe it just had so much boost that it kind of just like was able to power through it a little bit and like feel somewhat fast or healthy, I don't know. So like I said, it's, it's running lean, which I'm assuming it's running out of fuel pressure because it's got you know plenty of fuel in the tune, the duty cycle's really low, it's 2000 cc injectors. Uh, the only thing that makes sense is the, either the reference line going to the, to the controller or to the fuel pressure regulator is bad or it has like a clogged fuel filter or the fuel pump is just inadequate. It does seem like a fairly small inline pump. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack up the car and I'm gonna take the Holly fuel filter off because you can actually take those Holly fuel filters or most fuel filters nowadays, take them off of the car, put them up on the workbench, take them apart and then see if there's any debris or anything clogged in there. And uh, I'm putting my money on that thing's completely plugged up. Because uh, I've had this situation numerous times and I'll be honest guys I don't really run fuel filters on cars because this situation comes up more than 
I'd like to admit. And uh, uh, Black Betty Mustang, my Fox Body, my Integra, my, I don't even know what else. None of it runs a fuel filter. <laughs> I don't know. Just don't be pouring sand in your gas tank, you'll be all right. <laughs> Just babbling. Don't take what I say seriously, people. <laughs> I'm going to copy the low cam side. Well, well, I'm gonna check out the tune here. On the 20, like the 20 degree table, 30 and 20 degree, and I guarantee. So if we look at the low cam side here, we have like 2,800, 3,000 value at five pounds. And if we go to the VTEC side at five pounds, it's only 2,600. So, yeah. What I'm gonna do, uh, so this doesn't become an issue again, is I'm gonna take the 20 or 30 degree table and I'm going to copy that to all the tables, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then I'm gonna highlight, edit all tables, so this doesn't become an issue again, and when I'm adjusting, I'm actually adjusting the, the whole map and not just, you know, zero degree. Idiot. Yep, just as I thought, it's freaking perfect now. Uh, it is a little bit rich on the low cam side, so I'm gonna pull a little bit of fuel out of the low cam real quick, and then we're gonna do one more rip. was able to do a pull like almost I think to like 7500 or something is this good content oh I'm so freaking happy this thing's gonna need some E85 though I wonder what timing is in it at 30 degrees here let's see Nineteen degrees. That's pretty freaking weak, bro. All right, I got the data logger running down there. Let's see if the uh, low cam is any better this time. What the fuck? I broke my gas pedal. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> oh man, I don't know. How oh shit. I got no gas pedal. <laughs> the air fuel up top looked great, but now I don't know how I'm getting home. What the fuck? <laughs> I literally just went to go bang third gear and I broke the gas pedal, guys. Man. I guess I just drive too hard, huh? That's hilarious. All right. Is this good content? Is this real content? I don't know if this is real content, guys. A guy in the comments said, uh, when are you gonna start making real content? I don't know, I really don't. All right, let's see. Let's see what the heck went on here. Oh, that fell out. That thing fell out. And I'm pretty sure that ho houses the cable. Uh, I'm on the side of the road right now, as you can see. Um, I'm gonna turn this thing off. Should we look at the data log before we fix the gas pedal? Probably. That's what any good tuner would do, right? I'm trying to be a good tuner, so I should probably do that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, dude, look at that duty cycle. Heck yeah. It went up perfectly. You guys see that there instead of it dropping like it was before? And that is... I revved it to about 6,000 RPM and it was five pounds of boost. So, awesome. I'm stoked on that. The pull before that, uh, the one off camera, I revved it higher, 6,700. And man, up top there, 6,700 and higher, this thing really started getting after it. Uh, so, man, I can't wait until I can uh, fix this gas pedal and try again. All right, good news, and actually not really that good of news. Um, this gas pedal has this like adjustment thing on it with uh, like a screwdriver screw. And um, 
this jammed into where the cable is. The cable is just coming through the floor and I can't get up in there and tighten this little screw on the side of the road. I don't have a screwdriver or anything with me. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix this on the side of the road, but I do have a laptop. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is this car to control the idle, to control the idle on this car, it's running zero degrees of timing at idle. So I'm gonna try to put timing back in it and hopefully we can get the idle higher. And if we can get it to idle high, let's try this. Live at five, let's try this. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, alarm, I'm like literally in the car. I'm in the car and it's still doing it. All right, so we fired it up. We have no gas pedal, nothing. So I can't give it throttle. But let's see if we can spunk this up where it's at zero degrees of timing. Let's just take all these values where it's 16 and a half down low, all the way at 2000 is 28. And we'll just hit interpolate vertically and we'll upload this. Okay, it's uploading. Now we'll start it back up and see how it idles. Hopefully it idles high. Of course not. Who? come on, come on. Um, okay, so we uploaded that. What else can we do here? Can we go in cam angle and give it like some cam angle maybe? What if we give it like, what if we give it uh, 15 on cam angle? Let's see if that does anything. No, it did not do anything. Uh, let's go to parameters, see if this idle stuff works. I doubt it. Do you think it's got an idle air control valve, guys? I have no idea. But let's set it high. See if that does anything. Oh, we did get a bump. We're at like 1300 now, it looks like. Um, let's log and see where the timing is. Display. Ignitions at negative one Probably because there's an ignition compensation to hit a target idle somewhere Ignition Compensation table right here. So this is if it goes 50 below or 50 above It's gonna add up to 20 degrees of timing or take away 20 So we're gonna set this all at zero and watch this idle fly up put 40 now it's at 27 degrees okay two grand i think we can get home with just the clutch what do you guys think let's try this out mind you this is a twin disc with no throttle come on baby still got 23 degrees 25 try to get in second right away all right i'm gonna whip a ue quick fuck there's a truck I'm gonna try to whip a UE up here. That's third gear. I'm doing like 20. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna try to just safely drive uh, and focus on getting this thing back to the shop. And I'll see you when we get back to the shop. All right, guys, I uh, hit a downhill and I got it in fourth gear. I'm currently cruising at 27 miles an hour probably like 25 and I'm about to get passed by a bunch of people, but I figured I'd update you guys. No gas pedal uh, is able to do 25 miles an hour on this car if we tune it properly. <laughs> Sorry, people. Sorry. I can't go any faster. I'm sorry. It's a Civic. Give me a break. It's just a Honda. I need, I need a V8. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wish I had a V8 like you. I just, I, you know. 
sorry. Okay, anyways, uh, we're coming up to the farm here in a minute. Um, uh, God help me get back to the shop safely, please. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, so I made it back safe and sound to the shop, and um, I started working on it a little bit, and I <clears throat> crawled up under the dash, and I found this little gold piece this little gold piece when we were on the side of the road and this little gold piece has like a screw that bites down onto the cable and the cable goes through it and then the screw tightens the cable into this little gold piece um, and then this just goes on the opposite or on the you know throwed end of the throttle pedal you could say um, and there was no way I was able to fix this on the side of the road and I actually needed to put this little gold piece in the vise in order to clamp down on it tight enough to get the screw out because the screw the threads on it are pretty eh, you know like they're just kind of sticky um, so I pulled the cable I pulled the cable through the firewall and I got the little gold piece on there and then this little white plastic piece that's on here as well. Um, I just took this little white plastic piece off of the gas pedal itself and this piece I'll be able to feed and then click back onto the pedal with this on the other end of it. So um, I don't really like this design. I don't know why they didn't just use a normal gas pedal uh, cable, but um, this is what's in the car and I just fixed it. So uh, I'm going to reattach it. This is pretty tight. I couldn't get it to uh, pop off no matter how hard I pull on it here. Hur, hur. It seems pretty tight. So hopefully this guy doesn't pop off again and I'm going to feed this back into the car and uh, probably have to disconnect it to get some slack on the cable. I'll disconnect it from the throttle body there and then I'll reattach this to the pedal and then maybe we'll go for one more quick redemption pull uh, just to make sure everything's good but I'm pretty happy with um, actually figuring out the air fuel was just in the tuning and um, it was just my dumb you know went one you know went right over my head uh, adjusting all tables just always make sure when you're adjusting on K Pro you adjust all tables um, unless you're tuning specifically one certain cam angle, but we were just trying to get this thing rich and back up because it was really lean. So uh, that was the adjustments that I did and everything seemed to be starting to go 12s into the 11s. Uh, it wasn't 15 anymore, crazy like that. And the car was really starting to pull. Um, and the top end on this thing is probably gonna be pretty nuts because it really started pulling after 6500 and that's like right where i let off when it broke the cable there um maybe i just gotta quit being such a man with my right foot all right guys so under the car here under the dash you can see the cable with the little bra gold piece there and then the white plastic piece goes into the pedal with the gold piece on the opposite side of it so when we pull on this pedal it pulls on the gold piece, but I have slack in the cable right now because I disconnected it from the throttle body. I disconnected it from the throttle body here to get some slack. So now we're just gonna pull it back tight and hook it back up. All right guys, so uh, long story short is the cable that I just fixed, uh, since I had to cut part of the cable because it was all frayed apart from it going into that little gold piece I had to cut it a little shorter and after I did that it was too short so I just pulled a cable out of my EG that's sitting outside and I had to install that cable so now it's got a factory throttle cable in it and uh, needless to say after doing all that I finally got it running again uh, running again uh, running how it was prior so it's idling good air fuel good right around a thousand rpm um, so yeah Car's running good again. After breaking it, uh, you could say this video is clickbait, but whatever. That it's running good. I'll probably wait till tomorrow because it's dark out and this car's not plated or nothing yet. Probably uh, take it out again tomorrow, do some more tuning on that air fuel, and uh, see if we can get a couple full pulls in, um, and then make another video. Hopefully, getting some full pulls in. 
on five pounds. And then after that, uh, we can slowly get this thing turned up. Uh, I'll probably slowly start splashing some E85 in it as it runs out of fuel and um, slowly get it tuned up on E85 and uh, get a ripper out of this thing. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. I'm pretty excited to uh, bring you guys along for the journey and uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. Um, it might not be the content you want to see, but it's the content I'm making. You can stay if you want. You can hit that subscribe button if you want and like it, uh, but nobody's forcing you to be here to watch my videos. Uh, so with that being said, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have made it to the end, be sure to hit the like button, comment down below, and do all the YouTube stuff so uh, more people can see it that want to see it. Uh, but other than that, have a great night and a better tomorrow, guys. Uh, we will see you later, and uh, we'll get some more Honda content coming your way. I got all winter to sit in the shop and wrench on shit, so uh, yeah. Peace out, guys.